Well, listen, our next guest is a three-time Bard of Armagh winner, and he's been enthralling audiences for years with his unique brand of comedy. So will you please welcome Mr. Patsy O'Hagan. One of the last wee stories we wrote, I'm going to tell it to you now, wrote it about six weeks ago, it's going powerful well for me, thank God, out through the clubs. Kane, folks, you bear with me just for a little while. The tale I now convey to you could either make you weep or smile. I'm a simple sort of fella, an unassuming kind of chap. Me life's been blessed in many ways, and of course the odd mishap. Now, these mishaps here are seldom, thank God it's fair to say, but there's one that always springs to mind. It just won't go away. It was on a Saturday evening this event took place. The wife asked to have a little chat, and she had a big smile on her face. Now, the wife's a decent woman, as anyone met her knows. She washes and she cooks for me, and she buys me all my clothes. Now, buying clothes is quite all right. It's another sign that she still cares. But I like to have a say myself when it comes to underwear. For, for I'm the sort of fella that lacks a bit of slackness down below. Women wouldn't understand. Most men in here would know. So, getting back to that Saturday evening, the wife had been in the town. She, she, I've done a bit of shopping and I've spent a lack of pound. <laughs> For I've dunged out all your drawers and your underwear is done. There's new fashion on the market and I think it could be fun. <laughs> For you have a decent body as you look me up and down. Then the contents of a werewolf's bag, least gathered on the ground. <laughs> God says I what other, for I swear I didn't know. She, she, the thongs, <laughs> they the latest stag, and her voice was soft and low. Thongs, says I, as I scratched my head, i never seen them before. So I started asking questions of which part of the body they were wore. <laughs> they are to replace your boxers, as I told you they are done. In other words, you could say, you have a new holster for your gun. <laughs> Well, I felt a bit embarrassed for a modest, don't you see? Then she held them up against herself and placed them on me knee. Now, for you folks who've never seen them, I'll explain just what they're like. There's not enough material in them that could cover the saddle off a youngster's strike. <laughs> At first, they looked like someone you put around a greyhound's neck when you took them out to lay them or show them round the track. For they seemed to be all elastic and very little cloth. I swear there wasn't a mouthful for a decent size of moth. <laughs> now, I used to make caterpillars away back when I was young. Well, these yokes looked just like that. Lots of rubber on a tongue. <laughs> she, she, go and have a shower and see if they fit you. And I'll go and wash in the en suite, <laughs> for I bought myself some too. <laughs> well, I went and had a shower for all was try to please. But sure, the trouble only started when I got these yokes above me knees. <laughs> For the sweat was running down me back, I pulled and tried me best. It was, it was like trying to fit a goslin inside a swallow's nest. <laughs> now, it's not that I'm that well endowed, I can assure you I am not. I'm a modest sort of fella, but I'm happy with me lot. And with an almighty pull, I got them up. Elastic band sprung into place. Things to me did not seem right, and you could have fried eggs on me face. <laughs> and the tension getting tighter up around me thighs. Circulation seemed to be cut off, and the tears come to me eyes. And other parts that I dare not say were all gathered in a bunch. <laughs> the pain that I was suffering would far past this credit crutch. So I took out our second mirror, and I held it round to have a look. <laughs> Not a sign of cloth in sight, him. No one but a shock. <laughs> Till explain in more detail what me bike said it was like. It was like them yokes you'd find in big cities where you'd put the front wheel off your bike. <laughs> and whatever else was happening, I was nightly trying to walk. And me voice had hit a higher tone <laughs> whenever I tried to talk. For, for I was stuttering and I was stammering when I tried to pronounce me words. When all's not right down below, it affects your vocal cords. 
She was shouting me as you have them on. <laughs> what next am I to do? She, she stepped into the bedroom, for I have mine on too. <laughs> well, surely I would slowly, I reached the bedroom door. And there be an understatement to say that I was sore. And if all my existence and if I saw an uglier sight, it was enough to scare a bullock in the middle of the night. For there she was spread eagle laying on the bed with these caterpillars round her waist and rollers on her head. <laughs> then she started to wag her finger and blew kisses up at me. Were like two big Zuma rustlers you'd see in your TV. <laughs> well then with that me elastic broke and hit her on the ear. <laughs> and another bit went flying and landed on the chandelier. And I was standing naked as the day that I was born. And the wife burst out laughing, then looked on me with scorn. Says, I, Maisie, I've had enough. It's time we had a talk. For I think I've been cast the rate at that last time I went to walk. <laughs> and I know you still love me, I, deep down in your heart. The only thing them yokes are good for is to help to split a fart. <laughs> and what you're doing to me is nothing short of a mortal sin. I'm going out to get me boxers, even though they're in the bin. <laughs> that was a couple of years ago. The things are back the way they were. For what you're doing to me is nothing short of a mortal sin. I'm going out to get me boxers, even though they're in the bin. At last, common sense prevailed. Things are back the way they were. That was a couple of years ago. I still have the odd nightmare. For I feel that they're still on me and there's nothing I can do. If certain parts are not already dead, at least they must be blue. <laughs> Awaken in the morning, look down just to make sure the person who invented thongs was one contrary to her. <laughs> Hello, Phil Mac? Yeah, Tony. Phil Mac, these, these directions aren't working. How far through the show are you? Halfway. Okay, well, Phil Mac, I can't find this place at all, and I, if I don't get to sing out this show, there's going to be serious hassle. That's, that's not what I'm looking for. Okay, let me speak to Begley. No. No, I demand to speak to Begley. She'll know. She'll know what it's about. But uh, don't... He's gone and hung up. Begley won't be pleased. And I would like to introduce again, Justin McGurk. She dressed in the dark And she whispered a man She was pretty and pink like A young girl again and Twenty years married and she never thought twice She slipped out of the back door And into the night And silver wings carried her over the sea From the west coast of Ireland To West Tennessee To be with her sweetheart She left everything She went from Galway to Graceland to be with the king She was humming suspicion That's the song she liked best She had Elvis I love you tattooed on her breast When they landed in Memphis her heart beat so fast She had dreamed for so long now She'd see him at last And she knelt by his graveside Day after day And come close in time They would pull her away To be with her sweetheart She left everything She went from Galway to Graceland to be with the king
In their thousands they came there From the whole human race Just to pay their respects At his last resting place But blindly she knelt there And she told him her dreams And she thought that he'd answer Or that's how it would seem When they dragged her away It was handcuffs this time and she said, my dear man, are you out of your mind? Don't you know that we're married? Sure, I'm wearing his ring. I have came from Galway to Graceland to be with the king. I have came from Galway to Graceland to be with the king. Beautiful, Justin. We met up recently with Karen Scott, a journalist who has interviewed, among others, George Jones, Randy Travis, and Billy Joe Spears. I worked for the Alton Newspaper Group um, since I was about 14 years old. The Alton Newspaper Group it has 19 titles in Northern Ireland and two in Southern Ireland. Some of the people that I have had the opportunity to interview in the country music world have been superstars, legends like George Jones, Hal Ketchum, the Bellamy Brothers, uh, Martina McBride. All these people have toured here in Ireland recently and it's just unbelievable that stars of that calibre from America are now coming here to play on our doorstep. I oh, got the chance to photograph Gareth Brooks uh, a few times when he has toured over here also people like you too. I remember whenever I did the photographs that you too, uh, I was the only girl photographer that was in the press area and whenever Bono walked past me, just a little bit, he, he stopped and he got down on stage on his hands and knees and then down onto his elbows and he started get, he came closer and closer and I thought, what's he doing? He's far too close for photographs. How am I supposed to get pictures of this? And then all of a sudden I felt the camera moving and pulling back and forward and I thought what's going on here? It was Bono, he was trying to take the camera out of my hand and he took the camera off me and took my hand and sang to me and then he kissed me and away he went. All the other photographers were in absolute stitches. The new year ahead of us, the future's bright. I mean there's so many possibilities even though things economically are bad. Entertainment is is always there. It takes you away from whatever problems that you would ever have and it gives you new hope and new life and all the music that's coming from the country at the minute, I mean things can only get better. We're back after the break with the legendary Philomena Begley with a performance and we'll be talking to Philomena. Sure to come back. And don't forget you can follow us on our Facebook page and also if you log on to filmmech.com you can find out what's coming up in the upcoming weeks. See you after the break. Come to the Wyatt Hotel in the heart of Westport where professional and friendly service awaits you. The new Cobbler's Bar is the ideal place to catch up with friends and meet some of the locals. The Wyatt Hotel is 51 stylish bedrooms mixing old world charm and traditional Irish decor. The Wyatt Hotel, a gem in the heart of Westport County Mayo. Escape the bustle of urban life on the Great Western Greenway, the longest off-road walking and cycling trail in Ireland. This 18 km traffic free route is ideal for stretching your legs or getting out on a bike for a spin. When in Mayo, make sure you travel this Greenway and you will be surrounded by some of the most beautiful and idyllic scenery in Ireland. With over 40 years of experience and tradition, Hotel Westport is Westport's premier wedding venue. Set in seven acres of private woodland with picturesque river gardens and private patio area, it's the perfect backdrop for your wedding. We offer a variety of set menus or can tailor a menu specially for you. 
Whatever the wedding event, from an intimate civil ceremony to a grand reception, sit back, enjoy your special day and let our professional management team take care of your every need. Our chefs at Hotel Westport use the best of artisan food products to create tasty, award-winning dishes and exciting menus. Private dining for your special family occasion is their speciality. Cocktail making classes are also available in the Maple Bar. The Cubs Corner is a supervised playroom